Hello, I've got a few tips for you today on the Tyros keyboard about how to make your introductions and endings a little bit more polished and professional sounding. First thing I want to show you on the keyboard is let's suppose that we've got the style that we want to play all set up, everything ready to go. It's very tempting to just press start stop button first and then play the music like this. Now that uh, of course does the trick but it's very clunky, it's very very abrupt and uh, it's not perhaps the most polished way we could do it. At the very least I would recommend before you start playing press the sync start button then press your chord because the music will start at the same time as you play like this. Now another very good thing to do would be to use these buttons here on the left called intro buttons. Use them in combination with the synchronized start. So what I'm doing is pressing synchronized start, then choosing one of these intro buttons. It goes from number one which is very simple to number three which is a little bit more complex and lasts longer. I'll go number two to start with. So I've got sync start, intro, now when I play, the music will start when I play and we'll get a few bars of introduction music that's suitable for that style of music. Here we go. And when the introduction light goes out, we're into the main theme of the music. There we are. Now, now one very important thing about using introduction buttons is when you play a chord to start the music off, Keep that chord the same, keep it exactly the same, because the keyboard is playing a pattern. If you change the chord you're playing, it's going to sound really strange. So remember, when you're using introductions, play one chord and either keep your hand on that chord or take it off completely until the intro light's gone out. Okay, just one more point on introductions. I quite like this one. It works very well when you use a style of music that's uh, quite loud and full of action that comes in very, very uh, abruptly. For example, the big band, big Glenn Miller style band, it'll come in like an explosion. Everything comes in all at once, but it's probably a little bit too much, I would say. So, along with using synchronized start and introduction, I'm going to then, before I start playing, press the fade button, fade in and out button, because watch what this does to the volumes on the screen. They've all gone down to zero, and when I play the first chord, watch what happens. They all rise up, they're all coming in. So that is a much, much better way to start off a big dramatic bit of music. It's a slow fade rather than a sudden um, explosion of music. So that was a fade in and out button, very handy for making your intro sound a bit better. Okay, so moving on to the endings of the songs and how we can make those sound a little bit better. First thing to say is when you're playing a song and you want to finish it, don't just press stop. Don't do this. Don't be playing the song and then just stop because that, again, it's too sudden, doesn't sound very polished. At the very least, when you want to finish a song, press one of the ending buttons because that will play, a bit like the intros in reverse, a few bars of music that are suitable, but the band will play the whole song out. And just like the intros, once you've played a chord, once you've pressed ending, keep that chord the same, because the keyboard will do the rest. You don't have to continue changing the chords. Another really good trick when it comes to the endings is you can get the band, you can instruct the band to slow down, slow down the tempo. Sometimes a live band, when they finish a song off, will play not the ordinary tempo, but they'll begin to slow it down. It's a nice way to finish. And there's a nice trick on the Tyros where you can do this. If I'm playing a song, when I get to the ending, rather than just pressing ending once, if I double tap it, the tempo will then gradually slow down. I'll give you an example. If I'm playing this country band again. Here I go. The tempo coming down. So it's a really effective way to finish a song. That's a double tap on there. Now when it comes to using the double tap 
ending here. It's not always appropriate for certain styles of music. For example, the boy band style I've got loaded up here. If I double tap too quickly, listen to what happens. So we're playing along. I double tap, it's slowing down. But by now it's starting to sound a little bit strange, a little bit laboured. So it doesn't always work, but there is a trick to it. And what it is, is to delay that second tap. Rather than just going tap, tap, if I do it very slowly, press that first tap, wait a second or two, then press the second time, it's much better. Listen to this. So I go ending, waiting a few bars now. Now I do it, and then it slows it down. So it's not so exaggerated. That way works much better. So just delay that second tap if you think it needs it. And you can also use the fade in and out button as well when you want to finish a, a song very nicely. If I'm using, say, a big um, blockbuster movie soundtrack style uh, backing, and I want to finish the song, let's see what happens. So I'm playing the chord. <laughs> Press the ending button, then go to fade. Look at all the volumes, they're all coming down together. Okay, now a little bit like the, the double tap endings, it's not always appropriate to use the fade buttons the very moment after you've pressed ending. In fact, when you're using the blockbuster in particular, it's a good idea to just wait a few bars. For example, I'm going to do that again. We'll play. I'll push ending number three, which is quite long, but I'm going to wait before I press the fade button. Here we go. Press the ending. Now I'm going to hang on a little bit now. And only now I'm going to press fade. And down come the volumes but they're reaching zero at a much more appropriate time. And there's also quite a useful way that you can build in different amounts of fade time as well. If you press on the screen here, direct access, and then come over to the left and press the fade button, you can actually instruct the keyboard for the length of time that the fade works and save it into your registration memory as well. Um, I often find it's easy enough to go through dead reckoning, but if you like to get your registration set up precisely before you go and play a performance, you can change that if you wanted to. Thanks very much for watching. I hope you found that useful. If you have any questions, you can just leave them in the comment section below or send us an email. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.